it's all a little bit sad, isn't it? Here's a 38-year-old man, a man whose life is almost half over, and he's sitting in the gutter next to this thing. A cheap, 20-year-old blue-collar sedan that he loves so dearly. A car so worthless that many would say it should be disposed of or traded in as quickly and as painlessly as possible. For a car YouTuber, it doesn't really get much lower than this. In a world where there's a seemingly endless amount of influencers living the dream, producing epic high horsepower builds and driving new and exotic supercars every week, a video about a man attempting to spin spanners on old cars that not many people care about simply gets lost in the void. But for me, there's always been something special about ordinary cars. As soon as I was old enough to move under my own strength, I made a beeline for anything that had wheels. As a child, I would sit for hours out in the dirt trying to play with the wheels and tyres of actual cars. And then I drove matchbox cars to the point where their plastic wheels begin to disintegrate. I went from billy carts to pedal cars and bicycles to motorcycles until I was finally old enough to drive a car for real. And at every single step of the way, I never had the best. I simply had whatever I could get my hands on. But whether you're talking about bicycles, motorcycles, cars, or pretty much anything else in life, do you really need the best in order to be truly happy? Whatever happened to just enjoying the simple and attainable things in life? I used to have a dream that if I ever hit the big time, I was going to buy a huge multi-million dollar mansion. You know, the types with over 10 bedrooms and a 20 car garage. Surely then I would be truly happy with life. But really, when you think about it, are those things that I actually need to be happy? Or are they just things that I could use to look smug, you know, as I drove to the local cafe in my Ferrari for a double smoked chai ginger steak latte or whatever the hell it is that people buy these days? Before returning to my mansion to live a life of solitude and loneliness. But here's what I think. If money, status, showing off, and the validation of others is really that important, I don't think you're ever gonna be truly happy in life. Because no matter how big you get, there's always going to be a bigger fish. Someone who's better looking, has more money, drives better cars, bangs more beautiful women, and dines at fancier restaurants. And that's why I will never be a famous car YouTuber or an automotive influencer. Instead of leasing the latest supercar and living with my parents or financing my way into a JDM legend and living out of a rented apartment, instead I drive an everyday hero to my 9 to 5 job to pay a mortgage and live a decent life. My videos are never going to be trending and I'm never going to get the clicks and the views and the money that many others do. But I'm perfectly content with that because there's nothing wrong with being perfectly ordinary. Forget about what everyone else is doing on the wall of noise that exists when you start doom scrolling on pretty much any social media platform today. Instead, think about this. What is it that actually makes you happy? Growing up, I was always a fairly carefree kind of guy. I'd go to work during the week and I'd spend my weekends having fun, playing video games and just basically wasting time. I was living the most carefree life in the world. But when I hit my early 30s, it was like a switch was flicked inside my brain. I'll always remember one particular night where I was laying awake in bed and it suddenly dawned on me that one day I was actually going to die. I know that sounds stupid. Everyone and everything dies. One day, even this mighty AU Falcon would not exist anymore. We've all had family members die, we've had pets die. It's a simply a fact of life, but I've never actually thought about the fact that one day I would actually physically die. Sean would not exist. Gone. And it totally, absolutely scared the shit out of me. In the months that followed, that feeling never ever truly went away. And I'd just be thinking about that fact all the time, whether I was sitting at my desk at work whether I was playing video games at home, whether I was having a day out with the family. 
or even when I was mowing the lawn. Mowing the lawn especially, for some reason, it would just hit me really hard. I think it was the mundane, pointless nature of the task. That started over five years ago. It's still here today. Even now, I'm thinking about it. And it's something that I probably should have gone and talked to someone about it, but I never actually have. And I think it's because there's not really anything that anyone can say to me that's going to fix it. Time is relentless. Deal with it. So I started to think about what is it I truly wanted? You know, these feelings potentially mean there is something missing from your life and something you're not satisfied with. Now, I had a loving wife, I had a beautiful family. In that regard, there really shouldn't be anything that I would be upset about. But still, something was missing. And I've always been a car guy, so I had this feeling in my head, you know, I need a car of my own. Now, we already had a car. It was just a Japanese hatchback. It was a car I didn't love as much as I respected how good it was, how good it drove, how reliable it was. I didn't have a car that I could call my own, a car that I loved, a car that I could enjoy, work on in my spare time and go for drives and just enjoy the thing. So I set about trying to find the car of my dreams within budget, within reason. I do not have a lot of money, but there was one car in particular that at that point I had just always wanted to own. And after six months of looking, I finally found it. Nothing flash, nothing expensive, just a 1993 Ford NC Fairlane. And in a sense, it was my existential crisis car. This thing saved me, because anytime you're feeling anxious or stressed out, there's nothing better than having an outlet to escape from it all. To me, cars represent almost unlimited freedom. Freedom to drive whenever and wherever you like. The fun you have along the way, man and machine out on the open road. And if your machine just so happens to be something you picked up for a couple of grand because you like it, and you then gradually fixed it up or restored it all by yourself, well then, you literally had a hand in making that journey happen. Because cars are a lot like ourselves. We all need a helping hand from time to time. Someone to care for us, someone to nurture us, and help keep us on the straight and narrow. None of us are perfect, myself especially, but together, Perhaps we can get through even the toughest of times. In return, cars provide us with an outlet for our passion and creativity, an escape from the worries of everyday existence, and the sense of accomplishment you can experience after fixing or modifying something on your car all by yourself is unparalleled. It's something that'll make that next drive that much sweeter. It's something you can be proud of. As a man, I understand that talking about your feelings can sometimes seem like the toughest thing in the world. It doesn't help as well that society sort of expects that men should never show emotion, they should never cry, otherwise they're weak. But if you're facing something, you know, if you're having a crisis of your own, I implore you to build up the courage and the strength to go and talk to someone who can lend you an ear and give you the advice you need to help put you back on the straight and narrow and get through whatever crisis you're facing. But for those of us who struggle with that, there are other ways. Take a look at your life and think about what it is you actually want, the things that'll make you happy. The answer might just surprise you. Listen to it. Don't let anyone stop you, no matter how foolish or silly it seems. It might just be the thing that'll turn your life around. There is an answer out there waiting for you. It's just up to you to try and find it. What is the meaning of your life? What is the purpose? What do you enjoy? What do you want to be doing? For me, it was simple. I love cars. I love cheap cars. I love cars that a lot of people would be embarrassed to drive. But for me, I just think it's fantastic. I enjoy it. Life is always going to be tough. I still have challenges to deal with. I still fear the day that I'm going to die. But I can't change any of that. What I can do is enjoy it to the best of my ability. 
See you next time.